welcome to Kayla's World. I'm Kayla Canu, aspiring author, and today's video is going to be all about how to create unique fictional races for your fantasy novel, fantasy story, fantasy artwork, really just for whatever you would need to create a unique race for. Again, fictional. Um, but yeah, and so that is why I'm wearing these lovely little ears today because now I can be a fictional cat person. Yeah. Anyway, so over the weekend, I realized that I am a very, very lazy writer. So for whatever reason, when I created my fantasy world, I was using race names kind of as a placeholder, and these were races that already existed. So things like elves and orcs um, and fae. All things that have already been written and created by other people and I was using them as placeholders for my own fictional races and for whatever reason I just didn't think about the fact that those races were created by someone else and that those were someone else's races I just thought they were like I don't know a generic thing like humans are a generic thing nobody really created that they just exist um, but that was a rude awakening where I realized that elves and orcs were created by someone and that I should not use that for my own creations. So basically I was just being lazy, trying to use a general framework for my own work. And so I decided to make this video. I actually created a guide. <clears throat> um, so I actually created a guide which I have with me, I printed it out, um, on how to create unique fictional races. Um, for whatever reason you want to create them for. It could be for your Pathfinder game, it could be for your D&D game, it could be for your novel, again. Um, but yeah, so I created this guide, and if you would like to get your own copy of this guide, it is free. You just need to sign up for my email list, which will be linked below. Um, you can also find it on my website, which will also be linked below. So as long as you subscribe to my newsletter, you will get your free copy of this guide to creating a fictional race. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in and I'm going to use my own fantasy creations as my examples as I go through this guide with you. Okay. Um, so the first part here, it says when creating a new race, you're going to want to ask yourself the following questions. What purpose is your new race going to serve? So the first thing you ask yourself, why do you need this new race? Is it... <clears throat> because they're magical? Is it a cultural thing? Do you want a militant race? Um, are you looking for like a race that is specifically all good, a race that is specifically all evil? You're just wanting to mix it up and make your own creations. Um, what are they gonna serve? What, what, what service is that race providing you for whatever your purpose is? Um, is your race going to be magical or magicless? And how will that affect them in society? Um, because how they are affected in society is going to change kind of racial tensions in your world, so that's definitely something to think about ahead of time. Um, if your race is magical, you do want to make sure that you have a firm grasp of your magical system first. Um, you can probably create a race and then a magical system, um, but for me, I find that having my magical system and how magic works in my world created first um, makes it more realistic when I create the race to go with the magic because the magic in my world has affected the race. Um, so make sure you know your magical systems and maybe I'll make a video about magical systems later on. I know I have an old one about it but I don't know how in-depth it is. Um, so I'll probably make another one sometime soon. And then if your race is not magical um, then you might want to consider how evolution would naturally cause your new race to exist. So those are just kind of the overarching ideas, general thoughts you should be thinking about when you are creating your race. And then to get into the good stuff, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick what I like to call a base race. Um, and so this base race is really just an idea of something or something that already exists. And it's, it's meant for you to have something to reference. So if my base race is humans, I personally have, I mean, I would imagine most people have a pretty firm grasp of what humans are, how they function, um, and all that good stuff. So 
knowing your base race well is a good place to start because it's already giving you an idea of what's going on there. Um, you can use humans, you could use bears, you could use fish, um, you can use fantasy races that already exist. So if you really like elves and you know a lot about elves, you can start with that as your base race. Same with like orcs. If you really like orcs, you can use that as your base race. You don't have to be too concerned about it being something that already exists because the point is that you have something that you have a firm grasp on that you have an idea in your mind about it and then you're going to change it to create your own race, okay? It's just your reference. Um, but yeah, so pick something you have a clear image of. And then what you're going to do is you're going to either apply your magic or evolution to that base race. Um, so basically, I like to think about it realistically. My races were created by introducing magic to my base races, which is humans. So humans from my world is my base race. So I have humans, I have dwarves, and I have giants. And in my world, dwarves are basically just short humans. They are a miniaturized version of humanity that happened because of evolution. Same with giants, they are a enlarged size of humanity because of evolution. Um, so those are kind of my three base races. And then for my world, I'm applying magic to them. Um, and I'm not applying magic to all of them, I actually just I'm applying magic to humans. It gets a little bit more complicated, but we're just gonna use humans. So I'm gonna apply my magic to my humans. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about how exactly will that magic change that race or that being that I'm starting with. So if I'm in my world, magic has mutated the bodies. So, you know, it could change the shape, it could change the size, it can change um, their intelligence? Are they becoming stronger or weaker, more or less intelligent? Are they going to be more or less attractive? Um, can they still reproduce with the base race? Those are things to think about. Um, if they reproduce, if this new race reproduces with the base race, will that make a new race as well? Um, these are just kind of some of the thoughts, things to like, think about here. Um, and then if it's not magical, you can also think about evolution wise. So if your base race is a human and all of a sudden they're in this new environment, you want to think about how this environment would affect them, right? So if their new environment is them being submerged in water, probably makes sense that they have developed some sort of way to breathe underwater, whether that's gills like a fish, maybe they have, you know, webbed fingers like a fish, um, things like that. And really, I guess for creating a race, you could merge two existing things together where they're like, half human, half fish, which, you know, mermaid, I guess, kind of already exists. But there's there's all kinds of different levels which you can play with, so this is where you're going to be thinking about how you want your magic environment to change them and, you know, physical attributes, things like that, to create your new being and what it looks like and all that fun stuff. And then the next part is going to be adding culture to your race. Um, so basically that's going to be, what does your race believe in? Do they have a religion? And if they are gonna have a specific religion, you probably want to create, again, your religion before your races or together. Um, but yeah, so what do they believe in? Do they have their own religion? Um, are they accepted by society or are they outcast? That can affect their religion and their culture and how they interact with each other as well as how they interact with other races. Um, how do they interact with the environment around them? You know, the, the humans underwater may, you know, worship the fish and pray to the fish because the fish provide them food. Um, and they may have that, you know, cultural, you know, religious beliefs around the fish and, you know, worshiping or, you know, thanking the things that they are eating in the ocean, if that's where they live. Um, what do they, how do they survive? Where do they live? Um, what kind of rituals your race would perform? Things to think about for their culture. Also, what rules does your race abide by? So if this is a fictional world that you created, they may be outcast and they may not follow the mainstream rules of society and that can affect their culture and that can affect how the other races interact with them. So that can affect how they are perceived. Um, so that is more of their interactions and how they how they act and how they respond to things, um, what they believe in, what's important to them, all that good stuff. 
is going to be kind of in their cultural areas. Um, so now you have basically you have the physical stuff figured out and you have the cultural stuff figured out. Um, so as an example for mine, I basically decided that I was going to have a bunch of different races. A lot of them are regionalized. So I have races that are in the islands of my world and they are going to be more of a tribal culture. Um, they worship the fire shaman, which is part of the religion and my religion and magical systems are tied together for my world. So they all kind of go hand in hand, which is why I have so many different races that I developed. Um, but yeah, and then, so once you have your new race, you know what they look like, you know what they're doing, their purpose, where they live, what they believe in, how they interact with each other, then you're going to want to name it. Um, I do recommend that when you name your race, and, and you can do, you know, really whatever you want to do with this naming, you can just pick a random name, you can try to find a name that has meaning. Um, I would Google search the name that you're going to use and make sure that it does not already exist as a specified race um, in fiction. And if it does, maybe pick something else. Now, you know, your take can be completely different, but, you know, if you're wanting to be more unique, I would probably stay away from calling them elves or calling them orcs because that's something that already exists. Somebody already created that. Um, I like to use more interesting words. I like words that, you know, most people can't really pronounce. So for mine, they all have meaning and it's all basically wrapped around the type of magic that that race is used because the race and the magic is tied together. So I basically have a mix of um, the pure magical races, which would be Anai is what they're called. And then I have my mix of kind of half-blooded, mixed blood, um, still able to use magic, which is the Asud. And basically those words mean one means pure, one means impure, and yeah. So that is how I came up with the names for those two races, I also have a ton of other races that I have created, and they all have their own names and meaning, which in itself takes a lot of time. Um, but yeah, so that is basically it for this video. That's my walkthrough through my guide on how to creating unique fictional races. Again, you start with your base race, you basically apply your magic or environment to it, change it all up, give it its own new features, its own purpose, Add, a, add culture to it, give it beliefs, it, you know, which can tie into its purpose and where it's located and how it interacts with everyone, and then give it a name, and then you got yourself a new race. I hope you guys like these types of videos. If you do, let me know by commenting below, giving the channel a thumbs up, or subscribing to my channel. And again, if you would like to get your own free copy of my guide, all you have to do is subscribe to my mailing list in... Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed your time here in Kayla's world.